All right. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome. It is me, Jackson Wheat, and also Peter is here, as per always, he is our producer. So welcome, Peter. Glad to have you. Uh, so today, I should open this in here. Today, we are going to be reading a creationist book, so a little bit different from what we do uh, normally. I know last week... Last week was finals week. Welcome, Peter. How you doing? Um, and so I pre-made uh, the gorilla's tail and then just set it to release at the normal time that we do these things. So now we're doing another live uh, video. And so we are reading a book. Here it is. Sorry, I forgot to open it earlier. We're reading a book titled Did Man Get Here by Evolution or by Creation? Uh and so this book was actually uh, gifted to me. I was used gifted in the loose sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was given to me in my uh, junior year of high school. Uh, so I was, what, 16, 17, something like that. Um, because I think the, the person who gave this to me, who was a family member, uh, was thinking, uh, oh, Jackson's having doubts, so let's help uh, shore up his faith, as it were. Uh, needless to say, did not do that. Mm -hmm. um, this <laughs> this is just a creationist tract. It was written in 1967, um, and it has word for word many of the exact same arguments that you would find in any of today's creationist literature and that's what struck me so much about it um upon reflection some of the things in this book like i'll, I'll just give you a hint um it mentions how organisms are degrading over time ooh, which as you if you've watched our channel for a while you've probably seen we did a whole video on genetic entropy we've talked about it before uh if not go check that out uh that was an idea that well, john sanford has sort of popularized the whole idea of genetic entropy uh, he's a young earth creationist and basically it just says that populations are occurring mutations faster than they can uh, select out individuals with those harmful variants and as a result the population is sliding inevitably towards extinction well uh and they and to point to that they use some uh they use some papers well not all of them are recent like Kimura's uh, 1974 paper is not recent but some of the arguments they use in, in support of that are more recent, but they're all very terrible arguments. Um, but the funny thing is this book, which was written in 1967, which is before genetic sequencing was a thing researchers could do, makes the same argument. Before there was any data to verify that conclusion, the creationists had already decided organisms were degrading. Right? Right. Jackson, the truth so, never changes. You should know that by I mean, now. There you go. We've been told right. that well, over and over again. Science, well, uh, science out changes earlier, all the time, but the truth, the truth was the truth all along and will be forever. <laughs> right. I Someone pointed out earlier, uh, I, I think it was a um, reasonable doubt, that the, the data doesn't change, right? It's our interpretation of the data that changes, right? That's the data is still going to be the same. But I just I thought that was kind of interesting because, as you know, if you've watched uh, Arn Ra's channel, for instance, you've seen you know, how he talks about how every creationist organization has a statement of faith where they say the science, or you know, screw the science if it doesn't agree with us. Yeah. The Bible is the most important thing. Uh, all, and so this kind all of evidence, solidifies that. Yeah, all evidence that uh, uh, basically goes against what the Bible says is automatically dismissed. That goes for all the major creationist uh, organizations. They, they've all got, right. got the same statement. Right, exactly. So so, um, so on the one hand, that, that 
you know, sort of was solidified for me. Uh, so I think this book really helped. This was even before I, so I got this before I started like combating creationism publicly, which started in my first year of college, but this book, and I've referenced it in a couple of my videos helped, um, sort of solidify the, the dishonesty of creationism. Not, that, not that it is in fact correct. So anyways, um, um, all right. So this book is, it's, pretty small right it's not even like a foot tall and it's you know pretty thin so we're just going to read through this uh in total it says there's 186 pages but these pages are pretty small and a lot of them have pictures on them so we're just going to read uh right through it and pause as we will to address um criticism and things like that sound okay. good yep sounds good <clears throat> all right so the first chapter is uh is evolution an established fact and it says quote are you a descendant of an ape-like beast that lived millions of years ago sooner or later this question confronts almost everyone especially students in the school systems of the world the instructors and textbooks of these students teach that man did descend from the beasts by the process of evolution on the other hand the Bible teaches that God created man and all kinds of life directly and not by a process of evolution. Has there been so much evidence for evolution that this Bible teaching is obsolete? Is evolution a fact? Does it hold the key to the future of mankind? And two, does it really make any difference whether man evolved from the animals or not? Does it affect our lives? Close quote. Okay, so just a little preamble there. Um, so... What, what I think is interesting from the outset is they completely flip off um, any sort of old earth creationism or intelligent design or theistic evolution or deism. It's, it's you know, the, the sort of Ken Ham, like, you're either an evolutionist, an atheist evolutionist, or you're a good Christian creationist. There's no in between, right? At least that's what I took away from that. Peter, is that what you um, took away from that section? And that that is basically what what they say. That there's only yeah. two options. You're either uh, a blasphemous heathen who believes in the science, or you right. believe in the actual <laughs> word of God. That that is usually what people will tell you. And it's it's not just the fundamentalists like Ken Ham. A lot of people you argue with online will say the exact same thing. Because they they haven't looked into it, they they're not even aware uh, that theistic evolution is a thing. So I I recently uh, bumped into yep. to someone uh, you may have heard of, uh, Cindy Lincoln. He yeah was married to Kent Hovind for a short period of time, and mm -hmm. um, so I I think I think she's genuine. Um, but I've had, I had a conversation with her and at some point we went to, uh, uh, she, she went to, yeah, I still think that Kent is right about the science. And I told her, no, no, mm, people mm -hmm. like Kent are lying to you. Um, uh, I think, I think Kent knows full well he's lying. I think a lot of the, uh, major creationists do know that they're lying mm -hmm. and, but she yeah. wasn't even aware that Christians could accept evolution and still be a Christian. And I told her that there are lots of people who do. I can even get you right. in touch with an evolutionary biologist who is a Christian. Right. I mean, by God, right? He said, yeah. he said, oh, no, there's, he said he would. There's he, lots of them, right? Yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of yeah. people, but. Even in, in our small circle, there are people who can actually make that case. And it's, right. it's staggering that some of the people don't even know that. So they're, they're mm -hmm. for some reason, yeah. that they're not going to look for any evidence outside of what they're being told in church, basically, or right. online, which is sad. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is sad. Yeah, I've, I've had uh, discussions with Sigart and I've had other, you know, I've, I've run into a number of of Christians who accept evolution and you know evolutionary biologists and scientists who are Christians and there's no 
problem intrinsically between you know any of the <laughs> major religions and and science evolution. So the idea that you have to either be an atheist evolutionist or a Christian creationist, those are your only options, is just ridiculous. It's yeah. it's just um uh, it's just nonsense. So anyway. <clears throat> All right. Continue on. So this section is titled Organic Evolution. Quote, evolution in the sense that it is applied to plants, animals, and man <clears throat> is said to be the transforming of one kind of life into another kind. Hmm. A writer in the Houston Post of August 23rd, 1964 defined it this way. Evol quote, within a quote. Evolution, in very simple terms, means that life progressed from one-celled organisms to its highest state, the human being, by means of a series of biological changes taking place over millions of years, close quote. Another source, the River of Life, stated, quote, when living things come, or, sorry, came out of the sea to live on land, fins turned into legs, gills into lungs, scales into fur, close quote. And the 1966 World Book Encyclopedia said, quote, The theory of organic evolution involves these three main ideas. One, living things change from generation to generation, producing descendants with new characteristics. Two, this process has been going on so long that it has produced all the groups and kinds of things now living, as well as others that lived long ago and have died out or become extinct. Three, these different living things are related to each other, close quote. Okay, so let's take that little bit, those uh, essentially two paragraphs. Because like I said, this book's pretty small, the type is fairly large, and so they, so. Um, okay, so the first thing I noticed is all of their citations are uh, popular level works, right? Uh, Houston Post is a news article. The River of Life. I assume that's a, a book. Um, never heard of it. And the 1966 World Book Encyclopedia. So these are all just like your everyday sources. Mm -hmm. Right? None of these are scientific sources. They didn't, you know, bother to read which, the technical literature, which does exist. Which, which, is a, which is a pattern that is still ongoing if you talk to creationists and they will give you links to... to things it is always right a, a, a news website or uh, mm -hmm. a, a scientific magazine that this or uh i mean they, they never go looking for for any sources and and by right. the way yeah the 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 gills uh turning into lungs someone should tell kent Hovind because that's not what happened right but Right, I was gonna get to yeah. I was gonna come back to that. That's a good. That's a good point. That's not what happened. No. Um. So so for yeah. So first of all, not any scientific sources in here. Um. Second, they said one kind of life transforming into another kind. Of course, the old you know creationist chestnut. Um. In case it's not abundantly clear, there is no such thing as a kind. Kind is as arbitrary as any of our other. <laughs> taxonomic category it's even more arbitrary than our other taxonomic categories because at least when researchers come up with a taxonomic group they have to give a justification as to why they have erected this new clade creationists yeah. don't really do that well <laughs> it's just, it looks kind of like it would fit in a group basically so. basically a kind is as kent hopin will say uh, a five-year-old can tell you if it looks like this it's this kind and if it if it looks similar it's all part of the same kind, even though they're not even remotely related, like um, uh, uh, Tenrex and, and Hedgehogs, for instance. Uh, right, they look the right. same. Yeah, kind of similar. Different, yeah. Ki different kind, definitely. So yeah, it, it's the funny thing is that also works for golden moles and moles because golden moles are related to Tenrex and moles are related to hedgehogs, but they're yeah. both you know, these groups are very distantly very related to distant. each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it, it's... Yeah, absolutely. That's so funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then and then they say, well, the evil evolutionists they go go and look by what is similar. They look at similar bone structure. 
what are you doing with a kind? <laughs> right. You're doing exactly the same, just not mm. on the inside, but on the outside. Because if it looks the right. same, it's the same kind. Mm. You're doing exactly right. the same. Except right. we do it in a little bit more scientific way because we look at the details, not at the global mm -hmm. picture. Right. You, so. you make something like a data matrix and you score each of the characters. You see, well, does this have, you know, four limbs? Yes. Does mm -hmm. it have hair? Yes. Does it have black memories? Yes. You know, you do this sort of thing. And using that, you can form these nested hierarchies with organisms. You can say, okay, well, it has these characters. Draw but lines these characters, on paper. And you draw lines. Of course. <laughs> yep. All drawing lines on paper. Um, so, I mean, like, as you said, Peter, it's the same thing it's they're exactly just doing the same it thing. At, they're like okay we're, we're okay with this much change but not like this much change yeah. you know we're not going to allow that much uh, yeah. the, and of course there's no reasoning as to why one but not the other it's all arbitrary yeah uh it's just however much they can fit um without making it seem like they're giving too much ground to evolution even though they're already accepting evolution because when Darwin first proposed evolution, creationists wouldn't even accept that natural selection or speciation happened, right? And so here we are, right? <laughs> it's... Long, long ways down the road. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I found I thought was sort of interesting about that section um, was was that they're sort of confusing the evolutionary history of life with the definition of it, with the process of evolution, I should say. Because if you've been if you've been watching us recently, you'll you'll realize those are two different things. There's the process of evolution, which you can describe in like mutations, recombination, acted upon by natural and sexual selection, leading to speciation. And then there's the actual evolutionary history of life on Earth, which is the the meandering way in which that has happened over millennia. And so they they sort of seem to be getting those kind of crossed with each other. Um, so, so like you said, evolution is very in very simple terms means that life progressed from one celled organisms to its highest state. I don't know what that means. The human beings. Have you seen humans uh, <laughs> by means of a series of biological changes taking place over millions of years? It's like, yes, that is indeed what happened, but that's not how it happened. No. <clears throat> it's also so, it's also uh, a recurring thing that, that they seem to think that it is is a ladder. For, it's going from, right. from simple things to the 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 best thing on planet Earth, with which is the human being, because that has to be the right. most evolved thing. If evolution is true, where there there is no most evolved, everything is equally right. evolved. Um, it yeah, and, and exactly. it's always the human that is the the pinnacle i mean right yeah put us put us in space see what happens or or put i would us, say uh somewhere where it's extremely hot like like uh um or extremely cold yeah, yeah or extremely cold i i i bet you the water bear uh is going to uh outdo you in all of these <laughs> environments i mean oh speaking of i got a water bear plushie today fun ah, fact he so, uh, um, you're right, Peter. It, the the water bears laugh at us, right? Because we yeah. can barely live on part of the surface of this planet, and they can live like everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, uh, or what was um, what was the other thing? There was something else I had. Uh, I don't remember. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, we can't live on like seventy five percent of the Earth's surface, at least. Right, mm -hmm. it's it's even less than twenty five percent because obviously part of that is desert, and you know some parts are like frozen tundra and things like that. So we can't live there either. Uh, but no, we're the we're the highest, we're the best. You're right. It's the this that that chain of being which was in the the sort of Christian mythology for a long time. It God, then the angels, then man, then you know the beasts below that. And of course, that's as you said, that's not how evolution works. No, nope. evolution is. Ever, as long as it exists, as long as it currently exists, it is equally evolved. Mm -hmm. So we are as equally evolved as cyanobacteria, as oak trees, as your garden fungi. Pine, pine all, trees. Pine, we, pine trees. Pine trees, yeah. <laughs> We've all had 
an equal amount of time to evolve. So we are no better, no higher nope. than the mushroom growing on, on a tree is. So um, uh, the other thing was that, that, you, that you, Peter, already pointed out was fins turn into legs, gills into lungs, scales into fur. <clears throat> or, <clears throat> I should have got a drink. I didn't. Um, so first of all, when... <laughs> fins turned into limbs before fish left the sea that mm -hmm. was a transition that occurred before they made it to land because yeah. uh, fins are not good um weight bearing structures uh they only work as weight bearing structures if you're relatively small uh which all the fish that do come out of the water like mud skippers walking catfish things like that um well first of all they're not even really the fins aren't bearing their weight. They're just helping them sort of slide around. Uh, uh, mudskippers do this sort of like locomotion where they're yeah. basically pushing their the, their body with their fins, sort of like a, a lot like of a rowing. A lot of the the anglerfish uh, walk across the bottom of the sea. They actually walk on their fins, which is uh, probably impossible. Then I don't I don't know because <laughs> they're using yeah. their fins uh, as legs. And, and right, yeah, they've like evolved little hands basically, and yeah. so they're kind of doing like this motion along the bottom, yeah. Yeah. And there, there, there's yeah, um, there's a lot of, of examples mm -hmm. when when it comes to yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, that's God really wanted, you know, like batfish to have hands for some reason. I don't know why, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um so uh, so that that transition, so the transition from fins to legs preceded being a terrestrial terrestrial locomotion. Uh, gills did not evolve into lungs; they've got that backwards. Lungs evolved into uh, well, lungs evolved into the swim bladder. Um, the gills are, and the gills are, are part of the fish um, swim bladder system. Is for, the swim bladder evolved into the lungs? You mean? No, backwards. Uh, huh? lungs so the earliest fish had lungs uh in oh. fact all so uh bichers uh bichers and reed fish which nobody really knows what a reed fish is they're they're like these snaky looking guys um i do have a bicher he's over there um as well as sturgeons and paddlefish gars and bowfins lungfish and coelacanths all have lungs so all the most primitive fish primitive fish have lungs now the in the teleosts, which are the ray fin fish, the that are the more derived ones, um, they basically closed off that lung and made it into a gas bladder or swim bladder. Um, and so it's still vascularized and whatnot, but not to the same extent as the lung. And of course, they're not using it for breathing anymore, it's to help regulate their buoyancy. But yes, the lung preceded the swim bladder, and lungs did not, gills did not evolve uh into lungs they already had lungs so um it's another wrong um and scales into fur no not as part of the sea to land transition scales turn into fur way later that's the reptile to mammal transition so way 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 <laughs> later <clears throat> i don't know what river of life is i guess it's a, a book i assume um uh, also, hey, everybody in the side chat. How you guys doing? I'm curious. Let's see. River of Life 1966. Is that, isn't that what it said? No. It just says River of Life. Sorry. Let me delete that. Let's see if we can find anything on that um, book. Are we going to find anything? River of Life, How to Live in the... F I don't... I don't think that's it. That's not what I wanted to see. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> None of these look like what I think uh, we're supposed to be looking for. So at any rate, well, we tried. Okay. So it's, it's always nice book. to see that they have solid sources that you can check. <laughs> A book that doesn't, that we can't even find on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, the World Book Encyclopedia, which I mean, encyclopedias are great as like a, a springboard for doing research, but you shouldn't 
<laughs> cite they're also the encyclopedia as the yeah. source it's also something that you should buy a new one every several years because of the new <laughs> information that is coming in i mean that that was a thing when i grew up you had salesmen coming door to door who would sell you encyclopedias and then uh, they would note uh, would, they would take down your name and they would mm -hmm. show up uh, two years later to sell you the new edition of the exact same encyclopedia that you had already bought because <laughs> right things change over time so you can yes you can link to an encyclopedia but that's going to change right someone just made a good point the river of life rutherford platt so i just look in the in the, the river of life rutherford platt here it is um so what is it so rutherford platt is apparently a nature writer Never heard of him, never heard of this book. This book was written in 1956, so it's probably slightly out of date by this point. <laughs> <laughs> Only a bit. Um, it has no, no um, description on Amazon. No reviews. And not a single review. Um, uh, there's a used copy on eBay. Let's see. There's Wikipedia for Rutherford Platt. He was an American nature writer, photographer, and <laughs> an advertising executive. He wrote articles that appeared in the World Book Encyclopedia, so good for him, I guess. The River of Life. Okay. Well, here, here it, Wikipedia links to it. Let me see if I can... Oh, it's on, it's on full... Uh, Full copy in uh, archive, so that's cool. Um, the f can I see the full title of this book? the The miracle of creation revealed in the world around us. So I I don't think this is an objective source just from the title. <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at this right now. Uh. Okay, I mean, I guess it's just it's just a cool little book uh, about nature. Okay. Anyways, based on the title, I don't think it sounds super objective. But anyways, um, <clears throat> so let's read that that uh, that quote from the World Book Encyclopedia. So that said, um, living things change from generation to generation, producing descendants with new characteristics. Yeah, I agree with that. That sounds fine with me. This process has been going on for so long, has produced all sorts of different organisms. Yeah, that's fine. These different things are related to each other. Yeah. So that um, that description that the World Book Encyclopedia gives, while it's not an authoritative source, um, it's, it's fine. Those are pretty generally uh, the, the concept, the major uh, concepts of evolution. Things change. It's been happening for a long time, and these organisms are related to each other. Yeah. 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 So. <clears throat> um. All right. Here we go. We'll, we'll finish out this page. Quote: Mere change within a basic type hmm. of living thing is not to be regarded as evolution. Of course, that is simply variety, as we can observe among all plants, animals, and man. For instance, there are various sizes, shapes, and colors of cats. But there is only, but sorry, but such is only variety and in itself does not constitute organic evolution. Regarding the period of time thought to be involved in the process, Professor uh, this Theodosius Dobzhansky writes in his book Genetics and the Origin of Species that it is, or that it, quote, is surmised to be on the order of two billion years from causes which now continue to be in operation and which therefore can be studied experimentally, close quote. Although some evolutionists believe that a creator began the process, huh, maybe I was wrong, most today teach that life arose from inanimate matter without any divine assistance. Their feeling was expressed at the Chicago Darwinian Centennial in 1959 by prominent evolutionist Sir Julian Huxley, 
who said that, quote, evolution had no room for the supernatural. The Earth and its inhabitants were not created. They evolved, close quote. <clears throat> okay, so we get our favorite little uh, uh, canard, our Pratt, uh, that, you know, micro-evolution is fine, but not macro-evolution, of yeah. course. Um, you can walk to your front door, but you can get, can't get across the street. That's impossible. Right. Uh, we have people asking in the side chat, why are they citing things from the 50s and 60s? Uh, if, if you missed it, this book was written in, or sorry, was published in 1967. So, I mean, I'm not faulting them for having, you know, 50s sources. That was relatively recent back then. Uh, I'm just, that's just what, what they're citing because that was what was current at the time. <clears throat> yeah. And, so, and, and, so the, that, and, and the fun thing is that all of the things in that book so far, are still the exact same things that they're peddling today. So, um, yeah, and and we see people, uh, for instance, like Kent Hovind, who will cite to things much, much older than the 50s and the 60s. He will go to, right. to science much older in order to discredit evolution. Because, obviously, right. uh, we haven't figured out anything since. Uh, you're, you're right. Um, I mean... This book is probably pretty new for Kent, yes. you know, given his source base. Yeah, so this probably these are top of the line current. information. <laughs> right. Some, some, someone Only should tell him about it. 60 years out of date. <laughs> oh, man. Um, although so, although yeah, he, uh, clearly... he, he might get a little bit upset that it, it's a Jehovah's Witness book. Because. Okay, so fun fact I was not given this by Jehovah's Witnesses, I was given this by Methodists. So there's that. Yeah. <laughs> um uh so the that canard uh well let's just define the terms. So micro evolution is genetic change below the level of species, while macro evolution is genetic change at or above the level of species. And what that and those terms were defined in what 1927. So before this book was around, those terms were defined. So it was wrong by 40 years when this book was written. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and of course, we still hear that canard trotted out today. Um, creationists have just painted themselves into a corner on that one. They don't have to do that. They accept macroevolution. They just decided this is the hill they're going to die on. They don't want to call it macroevolution, which why not? It's, it's what you already accept. Just get over it. You know, just accept it. Um, so at any rate, yeah. Um, they mentioned that there are various varieties of or, yeah, various shapes of cats. Um, but cat is, I, I don't know what it means by cat if it means like your house cat or maybe like the entirety of Fella Day. I don't know. I, I, th I think shapes and colors. So, so from, from the wording, I, th I, th I think we can safely say they're going by the cat kind, which are all the yeah, cats. Yeah, could be. Uh, because right. they, they look the same. Just different sizes and different colors. Of course. Other, other yep, than that's that, all it is. They're the same. A tiger is just an orange house cat. Just a big yeah. orange house cat. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's amazing um so they did actually cite somebody who while not technically a it's not technically a scientific paper it is actually a book written by a guy who wrote a lot of scientific papers that's the adosius dobzanski and he's just saying he just says like that yeah it is surmised um that life has been around for two billion years and the causes that caused it are now are, are still in operation and can be studied experimentally yeah you can study natural selection yeah it's that's a thing you can do it's pretty easy um in case you guys haven't seen it um there's this i can't remember if it was harvard or cornell one of them one of the ivy league universities and they took this gigantic plate this auger plate and they made it like increasing amounts of antibiotics as you go towards the center and they seeded uh, e coli on both ends of it and over the course of, I don't think it was that long, it was like maybe a couple weeks, the bacteria get closer and closer and closer to the center, right? They just keep evolving resistance to the anti to the 
it's like a magnitude higher amount of of um antibiotics in each layer so it goes from like you know 10 parts per million whatever to a hundred parts per million to a thousand parts per million and they just keep evolving they just keep yeah. going and they make it all the way to the end so it's evolution over a couple of weeks you know but they're still bacteria jackson they didn't evolve into goats. <laughs> and yeah, they didn't or, evolve uh, into elephants or pine trees or right that's true i you know i uh yeah i gotta admit they didn't become humans they yeah. they're still bacteria they didn't the humans didn't walk out the other side so um evolution it's, just proved i guess it's it's one of the things that 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 annoys me most they will come up with a ridiculous example um mm-hmm. and then and then throw that out as if the, that's their wisdom because this is what you claim no no one has ever claimed that <laughs> right. this is what you claim because you don't know what happened right. and so you make up a silly thing it's it's literally saying that if if uh if you have children and those children will have children and those children will have children eventually you will come up with your own grandpa no no that's not how that works <laughs> that is not how that right. works i mean yes there's a country song that that sings i am my own grandpa but it's not how evolution works <laughs> it's a country song oh no i'm afraid to ask uh willie nelson for one and and, um, and I still think it's a brilliant song, but hey, it's me. I, I bet, yeah, I bet it's funny. Um, so they said some evolutionists believe that a creator began the process. So that's true, uh, which is kind of funny because they said on the the page right before it that on the other hand, the Bible teaches that God created man and all kinds of life directly and not by a process of evolution. So it, it kind of seemed like they set it up originally as you're either an atheist evolutionist or cr- Christian creationist. But now they're like, okay, there are some Christians who accept evolution out there. That's, that's the thing. Um, but most today teach that life arose from inanimate matter without any divine assistance. Now, I happen to believe that's the case. Um, if you don't, that's fine. Um, we, we by no means have abiogenesis nailed down all the way. So if that's what you want to believe... Have at it. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. No problem. There. And even and even if uh, abiogenesis was proven, they could still mm-hmm. make the case that God set up the environment in which it happened. Right. So they will always have a cop out in order to to hang on to the beliefs, sure. which which I think is fine if that is what you yeah want to believe, and if you want to stick to that, have at it. As long as you don't yeah. Push it on everyone else. And and this is the difference between because they will say, well, you push your science on us. No. It, it it what we have to accept what is verifiably true. Right. That's it. No one's pushing anything on you. If you want mm-hmm. to know what actually happened, then you have to go where the evidence leads you. No one is pushing you that way. You can choose to right. just ignore everything. <laughs> and be stupid yeah no i'm oh, sorry that, i've that. never been of the opinion that like everybody has to be an atheist or something like that i've never had that position no you don't have to you don't have to give up religion to accept science that's never been a position i've held and uh, i don't really know anybody who holds that position it's like that's a straw man that creationists make like you have to be one or the other, but I really don't know anybody who says you have to be one or the other. It's, it's like, a it's a good like, argument. It's a good argument they use, and 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 now I'm talking about the, the guys argument. who make a ton of money out of this. Answers in Genesis, right. Kent Hovind, uh, people like that, who who are in it mm-hmm. for the money and who are making mm-hmm. a ton of money because of this. If you can turn science into a threat that wants to uh get rid of god the god that we believe in that is that is a good motivation for people who actually believe in a god to not accept it it has nothing to do 
with getting rid of God. The only thing we want to do is we want to look at the world, see what we what we have there, see the evidence that we have on how it got there, and go from there. That's all it is. Right. There's no no conspiracy that is is going to get rid of your your God. It, it just doesn't happen. Right. Yeah. It's it's just the a rhetorical strategy to try to scare the the faithful in essence. Yes. So, and yeah. give us money. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, right. that's it. Um, so I think I'm just going to read straight through this next section because it's basically just a page. Okay. It's not very long. And then we'll comment on it. <clears throat> uh, this the sub chapter is titled Accepted as Fact. So at the same con quote, at the same conference, Huxley told the 2,500 assembled delegates. Quote, we all accept the fact of evolution. The evolution of life is no longer a theory. It is a fact. It is the basis of all our thinking. Close quote. The 1963 book, Biology for You, confirms this by saying, quote, all reputable biologists have agreed that the evolution of life on the earth is an established fact. Close quote. The majority of educators also accept evolution. One university president from the United States said, quote, it takes an overwhelming prejudice to refuse to accept the facts. And anyone who is exposed to the evidence supporting evolution must recognize it as an historical fact, close quote. Even many religious leaders hold this view. The Milwaukee Journal of March 5th, 1966, reported that the, quote, pastor of St. James Catholic Church made a firm statement accepting evolution. He said, there is no doubt about the fact of evolution, close quote. The account related that the priest uh, underlined the word fact. The general acceptance, sorry, close quote. Uh, the general acceptance of evolution can be noted in the account of an astronaut who performed experiments outside his orbiting spacecraft. An editorial in the New York, in the New York Times, in the New York, just Times, of November 14th, hey, my birthday, 1966, commented, quote, all the reflexes and instincts incorporated in his mind and body as the result of millions of years of organic evolution here on Earth were severely tested by exposure to the weirdly different milieu of space, close quote. Thus, today, the vast majority of those who influence the thinking of people in both, <laughs> in both non-communist and communist lands alike accept evolution as a fact, and a fact, as Webster's third New International Dictionary tells us, is, quote, an actual happening in time or space, close quote, a, quote, verified statement, close quote. <laughs> Those evil right, communists, they had, <laughs> they had to bring him in. <laughs> I mean, this was Cold War period, but I yes. forgot. I really did forget about that. Um, good Lord, even though I'm... It it I'm was a, a thing. Left now it was a thing was back then. When I first read th this book, yeah, it was a thing yes, back then. Yeah. The Cold War, in in yeah, which I'm in which no one fought, and left and now you're 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 breaking up. Oh, a bit. Well, I mean, lots of people fought. Um, yeah, but it it wasn't it wasn't a global me war. I mean that that was. Uh... Yes, sure. Yeah. Should I switch to? Uh... Should I switch to to camera off? Do you think is it breaking up that badly? Uh, it it so at the moment it's not that bad. Your your camera resolution okay. went down a little, All but right. but it's not it's not that bad. Okay. All right. I love that though. I totally forgot that it mentioned communist and non-communist yeah. names. They they didn't capitalize non-communist, but they did capitalize communist. I don't know why that is. Um. <clears throat> Maybe they were secretly communists. Who knows? Um, so, uh, broadly speaking, I agree. I mean, I think their their citations are a little funny. Again, not one, uh, not one scientific source. But I mean, yeah. Um... Oops! Now, now you broke up. Maybe, maybe try and, and refresh Jackson if you can still hear me. Because now you're completely frozen. You're you're in the ice age now. 
Okay, I don't I don't think Jackson's able to hear me, so I'll do what Jackson usually does. I'll 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 juggle. Maybe that happen helps. I I have no clue. We'll have to wait and see. Okay. Are you back? Hello? Nope. Refresh. Refresh. I don't think Jackson can hear me. Let's see if this works. Okay. Uh, well, in, in the meantime, I'll see if I can fill in the dead air because, um, yeah, bringing up uh, the Cold War uh, definitely was a, was a thing um, because uh that back then was was used as a scare and it was Jackson is back devices not connected okay so it was used as a scare and it was uh used for a lot of things so if you wanted to manipulate the public then you brought in the communists or the cold war and because if if they did it then it had to be bad and and that is basically what happened back then it it was a thing as as i grew up uh everyone was afraid of 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 russia and the communists because they were coming to get us they were coming to to take over and and probably uh we we would all suffer because of it it never happened it went the other way uh, the communist countries basically all fell and, and for the most part they accept uh, the non-communist stance at the moment for for the big big part um, I, I don't see Jackson coming back so I have no clue let me check on Twitter real quick nope nope nothing so I guess I'll have to fill in the dead air uh a little bit um so yeah that's that's a sign of the time uh bringing all of that in uh, it it it's it's still funny that um the the arguments except for for uh the the evil communists although you do still hear that at times uh when you look at at people like Ansys in Genesis they will still bring it up uh people like Kent Hovind will still bring it up but other than that the the arguments so far in the book nothing has changed they're basically all the same arguments that uh creationists have been using uh for all this time and they're they're even proud of it because they will say the truth doesn't change uh, it it what was true back then is true now uh, yes that 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 is a thing but also the things we didn't know back then and we do know right now those are also true the only difference is we didn't know about it um I'm getting a little bit nervous because. Okay, Jackson says. I'm attempting to reconnect. Okay, and I'm filling in the dead air. So let's hope Jackson's uh, internet will evolve at some point. Where, where it gets better and better and better. Uh, so far, it hasn't. Um, so, what what I shall do instead is point out that um, you can uh, place a super chat, help Jackson out, uh, throw some money at Jackson so he can get some some better internet. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, so we have, I think we have a creationist in the side chat, Heavenly Faith, welcome. Uh, claim with no proof. I'm not entirely sure 
what you mean. So if you have any questions, uh, Heavenly Faith, uh, please put them in the chat and, and we'll be more than happy uh, to see if we can have an answer for you. Okay. Now I'm getting increasingly worried because... Okay. Jackson is having trouble because StreamYard apparently isn't uh, Uh, let's see. Jackson said, can you make a five minute break? Well, I could. I could stop uh, the stream and then pick it back up when Jackson gets back. Uh, although people who would come on would think, hey, nothing's happening because we've got the spinning wheel of doom. Um, so I'll, I'll try and see if I can just fill in the dead air. Um, Heavenly Face said there's no empirical evidence for that claim at all, and I still have no clue which claim you're talking about. Um, I'm guessing they're talking about the location of hell. If only we knew. Apparently, there's in Russia. There's this big hole in the ground, which is the entrance to hell. Uh, it's it's not that. It's just an old mine that someone for fun uh, set on fire, and it's still burning, and it probably will be burning as long as there's this fuel available. So, uh, yeah, not not so much hell. It's just a man-made hole in the ground. So, um, and, and I forgot, I, I still did have a, a topic that I wanted to talk about, something that Jackson mentioned before, but we'll, we'll wait until Jackson gets back to see, uh, Monica Luke said, I heard a nuke was used to put out similar long lasting fires. Not, not sure about that. We would, I mean, we, we have used explosives, different kinds of explosives to, uh, put out fires uh, especially after uh, the war in Iraq that's that's one of the things no no the one the one that preceded it uh, I keep keep mixing those up desert storm and the the, the other one so um, one thing I, I did yeah I, I I just remembered so there's uh the thing, whether or not evolution is a fact or not, um, it is a fact, and people will tell you, yeah, but it's a, it's still a theory. Yeah, but what is a theory? A theory is a body of facts, and the theory explains the body of facts and the mechanisms uh, um, that explain how we got to these facts. So yes, something can be a fact and a theory at the same time. There's, at this moment, there's so much evidence uh, that evolution will probably never be disproven again because it's we've been past that point. Um, and this is why we can actually say it is a fact. It is an observable fact as well. We can observe evolution happening in real time, both in the lab and in nature. And we have. So, um, yeah, you can, you can say it's still a theory. The theory is ex what, what explains everything. It explains the fact that we see that there is a natural selection ex explains the fact that we have a common ancestor. It all of that is explained by the the theory. And harmonica Luke, no string theory is a, a, just an hypothesis. Uh, there's so far there's there's no uh, 
as far as I know, at least no real evidence to to back it up. It is scientists trying to push uh, uh, to push back on on uh, on the things that we know so far. It it, it might be uh, that that we get some evidence over time, but so far uh, not really. So I'm. Currently waiting, Jackson says he's rebooting. I know for a fact that his computer isn't the fastest one on the planet, so this might take a while. Um, I really was hoping that um, Heavenly Faith would have a question. He says he has a question, but he hasn't typed the question. Oh, Heavenly Faith, what is your question? Instead of saying that you have a question, put it in the chat and we'll see if we can answer it. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, okay. So, um, if you want to get this book, it is still available on uh, Amazon. Uh, the hardcover is only f uh, three cents short of six dollars. And there are even uh, used copies available from uh, as much as two dollars and ninety nine cents. And there's one on eBay for just a dollar. So. The publisher is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, edition not stated, uh, January 1st, 1971. It is a hardcover, has 191 pages, and as Jackson pointed out, they're not that, uh, the book isn't that big, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tiny book, and apparently the print is uh, pretty large, so it should be easy. To get through it um let's see there there are some reviews um 2011 the watchtower's first detailed critique of evolution this 1967 publication of the watchtower bible and tract society jehovah's witnesses was perhaps the first of the four inch by six inch 190 page format they favored for most of their future publications so there's a first uh, it's well illustrated with drawings and charts charts with an initial pressing of 18 million copies 18 million hmm. they didn't hold back on that it was obviously intended for very wide distribution far outside the Jehovah's Witnesses themselves, which uh, is in line with what Jackson said, because uh, he was gifted it by uh, his Methodist grandparents. Um, so, how can agreements be obtained that Homo erectus evolved into Homo sapiens when it's admitted that there is no evidence? This kind of agreement can come only as a result of dogmatism, blind faith, credulity, asserting to be true what no one wants to be true, but certainly this is not a scientific procedure. Uh, yes, it is. And I, I, I'm... The thing here is, what for me, what stands out is asserting to be true what no one... What one wants... Oh, sorry. What one wants to be true. That is a creationist uh, statement. They want things to be true, and therefore they have to ignore facts. Okay, now we've got, we've got a really relevant question when talking about evolution from heavenly faith. What morals do atheists have bes besides appealing to opinion, and how is it beneficial to mankind? It is, it is beneficial because... Um, if your morals come from uh, what what we would call the golden rules, um, I want to be treated. Uh, I want to treat you the same way that I want to be treated. That is beneficial to mankind. 
if uh, you don't want something to happen to you and you don't do that to someone else, that is beneficial to mankind. Uh, I usually go by uh, causing the least amount of harm uh, possible. I mean, yes, people do have to have operations, so you have to cut people open. That is causing harm, but it's beneficial for uh, the, the cause that it's applied to. And so we do have a spinning wheel of Jackson, and there he is. He's back. He's back from hate everything. The, the, All right. the halls of doom. That... I only lost internet for like a second, but <laughs> it did not let me back into StreamYard. So at any rate, here it, we are again. It happens. Sorry for all that. Uh, sorry for that, folks. <clears throat> all right, back I, to where I, I rambled on. You can you can cut that out later if if it's completely inappropriate. It's, it's okay. We're just gonna. So. I don't know what was said. Don't don't want to know. All right. So. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, so um, all reputable biologists have agreed that the evolution of life on Earth is an established fact. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. like oh, what do we say? Over ninety nine point nine percent of bio of Earth and life sciences life scientists agree that evolution is true. So that's all biologists, paleontologists, geologists. Everybody agrees. It's mm -hmm. evolution is true. Sorry if you don't like that, get over it. Yeah. Um, I just I just explained that uh, uh, si uh, since you were off, oh, I, I I tried to uh, to fill in the dead air. Uh, one of the claims you, you usually get is, but um, the theory of evolution is a theory, and therefore it can't be a fact. Well, here's the thing: <laughs> it's the facts in the theory that are being explained right. by the theory. So yes, it can be a fact and a theory. As a matter of fact, it's a body of facts. And as right. a growing exactly. body so, of fact. All right. So, so good. Sounds like you covered that one. So we're going to move on to the next section and, and hope that I don't get booped off again. <laughs> um, I'm just going to read the next page. So okay. this, so it's, so the, uh, the, this previous subsection was that evolution is accepted by fact is basically everybody. But in the next subchapter title is, but is it a fact? Quote, however, when analyzing more deeply the comments of those who consider evolution an established fact, a truly amazing situation develops. It is uh, one it, it is one that the average person is probably not aware of, one that has few parallels in any other field of science. Over 100 years ago in 1859, evolutionist Charles Darwin stated in Chapter 6 of his book, The Origin of Species, quote, Long before the reader has arrived at this part of my work, a crowd of difficulties will have occurred to him. Some of them are so serious that to this day I can hardly reflect on them without being in some degree staggered. Close quote. How much of a fact was evolution in Darwin's day if he was staggered by its difficulties? Has more than a century of intensive investigation since Darwin's time clearly verified evolution as a fact? Science Year of 1966 reported, quote, archaeology, despite its triumphs, remains almost at the beginning of the immense task of reconstructing mankind's history, close quote. A beginning certainly cannot be considered the same as an established fact. This paradox is heightened by the renowned evolutionist Professor Dobzhansky in his book, The Biological Basis of Human Freedom. He first declares, quote, evolution as a historical fact was proved beyond reasonable doubt, not later than in the closing decades of the 19th century, close quote. But then just two pages later, he says, quote, there is no doubt that both the historical and causal aspects of the evolutionary process are far from completely known. The causes which have brought about the development of the human species can only be dimly discerned, close quote. Okay, so let's take that little bit apart. Because already I'm seeing some very major quote mines here. Um, I'm sure those are totally justified and not at all dishonest. So despite the fact that in the previous subsection, um, the book says, yeah, everybody pretty much agrees with evolution. Now they're saying, aha, perhaps they're all wrong. Well, maybe could be, I guess. Uh, but I don't think that's the case. So this quote 
uh, that Darwin has long before the reader has arrived as part of crowd difficulties will occur to him. If I remember correctly, I believe chapter six is the chapter on the difficulties of evolution. So Darwin, who's like literally the first dude to formalize evolutionary theory and who has by this point spent some 20 years thinking about evolution and considering it and all that sort of stuff, <clears throat> at least, I think maybe even 30 years. By now, yes, he's considering a lot of things uh, about how natural selection works, how variations are inherited and passed on and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, if you're the first guy working on this, you're probably going to see issues. You're like, I don't have everything worked out. I'm going to put more brain cells on that and maybe mm -hmm. try to figure those out. And the reason Darwin didn't. And if you're intellectually sorry, honest, ahead. you will mention that in your book. Yes. That is intellectual yes, honesty. Uh, uh, if a lot of technical papers, or at the very least review papers of technical papers, will end with a section that says future research. And it will have a list of questions that are like, we don't know the answers to any of these things. Maybe somebody else can figure these out. These are avenues for the research to travel down in the future so that we can figure out what the deal is. <clears throat> now, Darwin... Well, I, I, I guess I'll say the, the part of the reason Darwin didn't publish sooner was he didn't know how variations occurred. And of course, variation, how mutations happen, wouldn't be figured out until way after Darwin had died. The structure of DNA and how mutations occur and all that sort of stuff wouldn't be figured out till the 50s. So way, way, way after Darwin was dead, something like nearly 70 years later. So that's part of the reason Darwin took so long. It wasn't until um, Darwin got a letter from Alfred Russell Wallace where Wallace said he had basically also figured out natural selection that Darwin realized he had to push uh, origin of species into production. And so he did. But yes, but there was a lot of stuff Darwin wrestled with. Um, you've, you've probably heard the, uh, the quote about the peacock's uh, tail feather or the sight of it makes me sick. Well, yeah, he said that. But then he also figured out that sexual selection was a thing. And so that explained why the peacock's tail was so pretty, because they use it to attract females, right? Um, and so, it, sure, it may have made him sick at one point, but he figured out why it was that way. So that difficulty became a non-difficulty in his own lifetime. Yeah. And and so um, the, what, what I said, this is what I think is the dishonesty. They will point out, the, the, the parts in the book where he says that he has doubts, then he will go on mm -hmm. page after page after page explaining why this doubt is not is is no longer an issue because he's figured it right. out. And they will skip all of that. They will just... It's oh, the, they do that very thing a little bit later, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so... Yeah, I'm not even going to mention the I quote here because I know they bring it up later and we'll talk about it then. Um, because that's, you know, exactly what you're, what you're talking about. Um, so yeah, so Darwin wrote a chapter where he was like, here are some things that I think are avenues of future research that I haven't quite worked out. You know, maybe I will, maybe somebody else will. And that's what chapter six is about. <clears throat> but that's not to say Darwin thought that natural selection wasn't true or that the earth wasn't millions of years old or that life shared one or a few common ancestors he agreed with all of those things and he forcefully argued for all those things in origin mm -hmm. so it's dishonest to act like darwin had doubts about some aspects therefore the whole thing is suspect that's just dishonest sorry yeah um the other very dishonest thing in here is it says, has more than a century, or quote, has more than a century of intensive investigation since Darwin's time clearly verified evolution as a fact. Well, close quote, sorry. Well, then the next line is, archaeology, despite its triumphs, remains almost at the beginning of the immense task of reconstructing mankind's history. So it says, is evolution true? And then it says, archaeology is at the beginning of of its of its you know field like what yeah. who are you trying to fool who are you trying to pull the wool over on that's ridiculous but, but see yes he and here's the thing because and and this is how 
um, the people who wrote the book would look at it because from their point of view, uh, it all started with Adam and Eve. So if archaeology right. is doing its work, they would be able to trace everything back to Adam and Eve. They would find uh, m maybe writings. They would find maybe uh, uh, places where people lived and maybe even find the Garden of Eden. Uh, I don't know. Uh, right. This is what, what they thought back then that that would happen, that archaeology would come up with. So I can see how they put that in because they there's yeah. still such it it's there's so uh there's a big distance between the two between the the creationist mm -hmm. and the people who who are working on evolution they've got a a completely different way of thinking and some still do yeah no that's fair i just that that blew <laughs> me over that quote um the other I mean, this whole section is just quote mines, um, because the third one is, they're quoting Dobzhansky here, um, that evolution is a fact and nobody doubts it. And then he says, there is no doubt that uh, the historical and causal aspects of evolutionary process are far from completely known. Those are both true. It's true that everybody accepts evolution, and it's true that we don't know everything about evolution. Those yep. are both facts that are not mm -hmm. contradictory. Like, what do you want? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's there's an easy comparison. Gravity. There's an easy comparison to be there's... made. The the average driver will accept that a car works, even when yes. they don't have a clue how we got to cars or how cars work. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we accept the evidence that they actually you turn the key, the engine starts, you put it in gear, and you go forward. And there's a big wheel you can right. turn. It all works. I mean, right. it's basically the same thing. It doesn't mean that yeah. you know everything about it. Yeah, um, the, and the same is true of like gravity. Like everybody accepts gravity, but like, as I understand it, there's no like single theory of gravity that explains like all gravitational interactions, right? No, and and we still exactly. don't so, exactly know what it is. We can see the right. effect. And yet nobody expects that if they jump out a window, they're going to float away. No. Nobody thinks that. Right. No. So it's just ridiculous. Um, anything you want to add on that section or should I move on to the next one? No, we can, we can, we can move on. We can move on. Okay. All right. Quote. On the one hand, evolution is declared to be a fact, but on the other, it is acknowledged that the process is far from completely known that causes Oh, sorry, the, cause, the causes only dimly discerned, the difficulties staggering. Eh. These are not isolated cases. The Encyclopedia Britannica stated, quote, we are not in the least doubt, we are not in, we are not in the least doubt as to the fact of evolution. That's a weird sentence. Okay. The evidence by now is overwhelming. That's a less weird sentence. But a few pages later, it called the evidence very imperfect and often interrupted by gaps. Mm. It added, quote, of the vital processes which brought about these changes, we are as yet ignorant, close quote. <clears throat> Famous evolutionist Sir Gavin De Beer, in his recent biography, Charles Darwin writes, quote, Darwin predicted that the evidence would one day be, so be, forth be forthcoming, and that day has arrived for the series of fossils just mentioned provides the crucial evidence that man did evolve, close quote. Yet in 1964, in the book, The Fossil Evidence for Human Evolution, written by another prominent evolutionist, W. Legros Clark, we read, quote, the chances of finding the fossil remains of actual ancestors <laughs> or even representatives of, local geographical, of the local geographical group which provided the actual ancestors are so fantastically remote as not to be worth consideration. The interpretation of the paleontological evidence of hominid evolution, which has been offered in the preceding chapters, is a provisional interpretation. Because of the incompleteness of the evidence, it could hardly be otherwise. Close quote. When Science Magazine in 1965 reviewed the book, The Basis of Human Evolution, it stated, quote, The reader may be dumbfounded that so much work has settled so few questions. Close quote. And in 1960... And 
in the 1966 World Book Encyclopedia, I can read people, I promise, we read, quote, no one should make the mistake of saying that evolution is fully understood, close quote. Also, Science Newsletter said in 1965, quote, the fight is among scientists over just how man did evolve, when he did so, and what he looked like, close quote. All right, so let's, let's discuss that section because there's a lot to unpack there. Good Lord. Okay, first of all, uh, remember the Dobzhansky, the Dobzhansky quote came from this century. Sorry, so came from the same century as the book, the mm -hmm. hundreds, and it said, and he is saying that the causes and uh, development of the human species are far from completely known, and he's right. Mm -hmm. uh, but Darwin said that the difficulties for evolution were staggering. So he is, so the author is putting it, these two quotes, which are a century apart and in different contexts together, and trying to make a single argument. And that's just dishonest. I'm sorry. Yes. There's, that's just dishonest. Um, the bit about Encyclopedia Britannica said the evidence is overwhelming. And then it says a few pages later, it says the evidence is very imperfect and often interrupted by gaps. I don't think that means the evidence. I think it's referring to the fossil record because the fossil record is very imperfect and often interrupted by gaps. But that's not the only evidence for evolution, nor is that the main evidence that Darwin used. It's also to be expected and, uh, if, if you're embarking on a new uh, uh, field of science where you're basically mm -hmm. completely in the dark. Yes, the, the evidence that you will get is, right. is sparse and there will be mm -hmm. huge gaps and those gaps will be filled in over time, which, which have basically we, the, the uh, evolution of humans. We've got a pretty good idea of how we got here and what, what species preceded mm -hmm. us. So yeah, th right. and that wasn't the case back then because right. And, and, oh, you're right. Yeah. The, the the missing link is a thing that we still can't get rid of because every single time we find a missing link, we've got two more gaps. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Doctor Banjo. Yeah. Yeah. And so it it that is what you would expect when when you're doing the science and if you're going to be and this is a thing that I will keep harping on if you're going to be intellectually honest you will point out that the evidence that you have is not perfect yet. It will never be perfect because right. we don't have every single species. We don't have fossils from everything. It is amazing that we have fossils at all. So it's yeah. going to be imperfect and we need to deal with the imperfections. But it, yeah, there's still a lot more evidence for this than the location of the Garden of Eden, for instance. <laughs> Sadly, that yeah. all well was washed away by the flood, so we will probably never find of it. Of course. Yeah, not all the fossils. I mean, like, the flood preserved some fossils perfectly and then preserved others, like, in eroded layers. And, you mm -hmm. know, it's so curious how it, like, chooses which ones to do in certain ways, but not others. It's very curious. And, um, and how it's so neatly stacked uh, with species that are only in specific layers and then never show right. up in the layers above it. I mean... Right. It, it's very nice. Very yeah. nice and neat. I love the way it did that. Yeah. Very convenient. <laughs> um, uh, Darwin predicted the evidence would be forthcoming and that day has arrived for the series of fossils. Yeah, so, okay. So... In Darwin's day, I think they had like Neanderthal fossils and that was it. I don't even think they had Homo erectus fossils yet. Um, they certainly didn't have Australopithecus. That wouldn't be until the 1900s. <clears throat> but um, but yes, uh, Darwin was actually... So he did use some fossils to argue for evolutionary theory, like Megatherium, which is a giant sloth, and Glyptodon, which is a, a relative of, of armadillos. is like a giant tank armadillo. Um... And Darwin looked at these guys and he was like, okay, well, these are different from their extant relatives who are in, you know, who are up here. These guys are found deeper in the sediment than their extant relatives. 
So maybe they shared a common ancestor who was even older than both of them with the, the extant relatives. And so Darwin did that. He also looked at fossil barnacle species and saw, even in his day, uh, uh, Scalpellum uh, arcuatum was a barnacle fossil that from the bottom to the top of its uh, of its stratigraphic record, it changed from one species to another. So species to species transitions in the fossil record were known in Darwin's day. Mm -hmm. He also incorporated more fossil species into origin in the later editions as more fossils were found, like Archaeopteryx, which was found in 1861, Halotherium, which was an early uh, manatee relative, uh, Dorodon, which was an early whale relative, which still had hind limbs. So, and same for uh, Halotherium, which had hind limbs, because modern manatees don't. Um, so yeah, Darwin was very impressed with the fossil record. The more fossils that were found, the more he was like, heck yeah, I'm, I'm on to something. Right. You know, I'm onto something, yeah. I'm onto something, yeah. yeah. And and so, so yeah, so Gavin De Beer was right here. Um, then W. Legros Clark says. So also, um, this quote I, I also agree with. He says the chances of finding the fossil remains of actual ancestors are fantastically remote. That's true, because <clears throat> as Peter already said. It's amazing we have fossils at all. Mm -hmm. And the idea of finding direct um, species ancestors for anything in particular is very slim. Um, you have to have very, very high population numbers to get preserved in good quality and also very tough, uh, a very tough body. That's why phytoplankton have the best fossil records because they have tough shells and they are preserved in very large quantities. That's why. Um, but for other organisms, it's not really the case. The human fossil record is, you know, sparse because our bones break down and they're easily eroded. Same is true of lots of other organisms. Invertebrates, unless they have a hard shell, have a very they're very unlikely to get preserved in the fossil record at all. That's why there are so few fossils of like jellyfish and tinnophores and things like that although although even even for humans there are places where where fossils are found so you we we have uh Utsi, right the, the guy who was found in in a glacier who was frozen for thousands right. of years uh the uh, uh bog people that that we find who are right. who are meticulously preserved uh, mm -hmm. so yeah we we do find human fossils and and we can learn from from all of that so and yeah, an, another yeah. another thing, and which which uh, wasn't even known in Darwin's day, is that with everything coming in, and us putting the uh, the the pieces of the puzzle together, we can make predictions, and we can say, okay, if mm -hmm. if this animal is here and that animal is there, then there should be a transitional animal, and we should mm -hmm. find it in this particular location because that's where the rock from that time period is is located where we can get at it and guess right. what we do find the fossils that we're looking for famously tiktaalik yeah yep i mean darwin <laughs> predicted that there would be a transitional fossil between birds and reptiles and archaeopteryx was found just two years after origin of species was published and that's you know that's why he was impressed by that um what else was there? Oh, the uh, the moth that pollinated the um, the the orchid that had like the really deep nectaries. Um, Darwin said, "I bet there's a moth that pollinates this orchid." Uh, Angraecum sesquipedale was the, is the orchid, and creationists said, "No, it God just made it that way. That's mm -hmm. ridiculous that you think there was some pollinator that evolved, you know, co-evolved with this." flower mm -hmm. well guess what xanthopan morgani is a hawk moth that pollinates angraecum sesquipedale and has like a giant tongue and so darwin was right they found mm -hmm. it they found the very thing that he said existed so even in his own lifetime well i know sorry that one was after his lifetime but but yeah he even he made predictions which were verified and some of which were verified in his own lifetime so <clears throat> But it's true that we're very unlikely to find 
direct ancestors of anything. So I don't disagree with this quote, but they're trying to use it as like we don't have actual fossils is kind of what they're trying to go for, which we is wrong. We have lots of human fossils. Mm -hmm. We have lots within Homo and Australopithecus and Paranthropus and you know Artipithecus and Sahelanthropus, but none of very few of those are probably our direct ancestors. Very few of them. So that's what they're saying, and it's dishonest that they're trying to quote mine it this way. So, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, and oh, and the final quote: "The fight is among scientists over just how man did evolve, when he did so, and what he looked like." Well, yeah, in the '60s we didn't have most of the fossils we do now, so researchers were trying to figure out where and when humans evolved. That's and that's if, what do you want? And you as know? I said, it's it's a big puzzle. So the things that you do find, you have to figure out where they mm -hmm. fit in the puzzle, which is still a thing today. Right. When when new fossils uh, come up, yeah. we figure out, hey, this this clay didn't evolve in this way. We have to put this clay over there and this clay over there because apparently now right. we've got a transitional fossil that proves that it had a different origin. And and. Creationists will always say that is dishonest, they're changing everything. No, we're changing it according to new evidence that comes in. And that is the honest way yeah, to do it. Absolutely. Yep. Yep, you are correct. Um uh, anything else you want to add on this section or are you ready for the next one? No, but we can go to the next one. Yeah, just a quick question. Are are we going to go through the entire book? Because I'm I'm looking at how far you're in. And and Hey, we're almost done with the first chapter. We're we're gonna finish oh. the first chapter today, and there's only well there's only eleven chapters that are about evolution. It, uh twelve through fifteen are about we don't have to go through it's all scripture stuff. We don't have to go through that. Okay. Um, so we'll just stick to the stuff that's about science. We'll leave the theology to the the theologians. Yeah. Well, I um, I looked while while you were while trying to get back. I looked and I thought one hundred and ninety one pages. This is going to take. But they're a small. <laughs> yes. They're small pages. Yeah, okay. With with big print, with big print. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think we'll, we're going to finish the first section today. I think. First chapter. Okay. Um, quote, can any process be called a fact, an actual happening, a verified statement when the knowledge of how, when, where, what, and why is missing? If someone stated that it was a fact that a skyscraper evolved by itself from a brick on an empty lot, but that how, when, where, and why it did so, and what it looked like in the process were not known, would you consider the transformation a fact or just an assertion? That the teaching of evolution cannot be called a scientific fact was shown in this statement by evolutionist Clark. Quote, what was the ultimate origin of man? Unfortunately, any answers which can at present be given to these questions are based on indirect evidence and thus are largely conjectural. Close quote. This is also acknowledged by a former president of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Writing in Science Magazine in support of evolution, he said, quote, Come now, if you will on a speculative excursion into prehistory, assume the era in which the species sapiens emerged from the genus Homo, hasten across the millenniums, for which present information depends for the most part on conjecture and interpretation to the era of the first inscribed re records from which some facts may be gleaned. Close quote. Uh, and I guess we'll stop there and then we'll do the next part altogether. So... <clears throat> Again, the author is conflating what we know about the fossil history of humans with whether or not evolution as a whole is a fact. And this is, again, just dishonesty. This is just quote mining and, uh, and, and, um, what's the term for it? There, he's trying to like muddy the waters, basically. He's like, ah, we don't know everything about the evolution of humans, therefore, all of evolution is suspect, which. Is it's no the, so the example they gave gave equivocation. We, yeah, equivocation. the example they gave. We we don't see uh 
uh, a high-rise building evolve from a brick? No, because we don't see high-rise buildings form in nature. On the right. other hand, if you have a river that will carve out because of the friction of the water, it will carve out uh, its bed over time, can give you the Grand Canyon. Well, that's not possible. <laughs> this is something that actually yeah. can happen in nature. We see it happen on a smaller scale. And we've got one Grand Canyon on the entire globe. One. So. Right. But we see different things happen in the exact same way. We see rivers carving out the land mm -hmm. over time. And yes, we, we don't see it in, in, in that scale because we can't observe it over that period of time. But we know that it can happen. And we know that if if we take what, what we can see and we would put what we can see over the next few million years, then yes, we would have another mm -hmm. Grand Canyon. It's that easy. Mm -hmm. We see it happen. But that's not the example they come up with. They come up with an example that is obviously man-made, a brick. And a lot of those bricks will form a building. Yes, buildings don't form in nature. Not yet. Yeah, yeah. It's that's um, Kent Hovind's stupid um, analogy. A, a skateboard's never going to evolve into an airplane. Well, yeah, a skateboard is never going to evolve into anything, and neither is an airplane, because neither of those reproduce with inherent variations. Mm -hmm. Neither of them are in populations that have allele frequencies which can vary from generation to generation. So literally, definitionally, evolution cannot occur. So mm -hmm. why the analogy? Yeah. You know, so it's a stupid uh, analogies, any analogy um, to man-made objects with regard to evolution is always stupid. And I hate I've I actually I've heard creationists make so many bad arguments with analogies. I try to avoid analogies altogether. Nowadays, I just try to explain how things are without using analogies because I just creationists have just ruined analogies for me. Um, mm -hmm. But at any rate, um, and he basically just says the same thing over and over again in this subsection about we don't know everything about human evolution. Therefore, all of evolution is wrong. Uh, which is just equivocate, dishonest equivocation. So I think I'll just move to the next part, okay. which is the final page of this chapter. The quote, the age of inscribed records began several thousand years ago. I don't No, Okay, well, fair enough. Uh, the evolutionary process that is thought to have preceded it is admittedly based on conjecture, interpretation, speculation, and pyramiding hypotheses. And of Darwin's famous book, The Origin of Species, British scientist L.M. Davies once said, quote, it has been estimated that no fewer than 800 phrases in the subjunctive mood, such as let us assume, or we may well suppose, etc., are to be found between the covers of Darwin's Origin of Species alone, close quote. The sincere inquirer cannot help but be struck by the situation. Evolutionists dogmatically assert that evolution is a fact, yet admit that all the important conclusions are conjectural. Indeed, one scientist, Dr. T.N. Tamesian, I guess, a physiologist for the Atomic Energy Commission, said, quote, scientists should go about teaching that evolution is a fact of life are great con men, and the story they are telling may be the greatest hoax ever. In explaining evolution, we do not have one iota of fact, close quote. Hmm. He called it a quote, tangled mishmash of guessing games and figure juggling, close quote. Another scientist, head of a college science department, J.W. Klotz, stated in 1965 that, quote, acceptance of evolution is still based on a great deal of faith, close quote. To understand better how this conflicting situation came about, it is helpful to look at the background of the evolution theory. Let us consider the following questions. When did the modern ideas of evolution begin? How have they developed? What is the current status of the theory? Why is there so much confusion and contradiction among evolutionists themselves? And if we apply the truly scientific method of 
method of observing all the facts first and then drawing conclusions. What do they show? Close quote. <clears throat> so first they're complaining that uh, Darwin says, let us assume or we may suppose. Uh, <clears throat> and there are interpretations and speculation and conjecture. Well, I mean, that does happen. There can be speculation and conjecture because we are working with an incomplete data set. Again, mm -hmm. I think this is probably referring to the fossil record. Um, and so you have to make inferences about what you're seeing, what what data you have, and then what can reasonably be drawn from that data. So, for instance, uh, Neil Shubin and colleagues took the observable data that we had Eusynopteron, Pandarichthys, Acanthostega, and Tiktaalik. And they said, okay, given that these fossil forms all exist, there should be a place on Earth between the time that Pandarichthys lived and the time that Acanthostega lived. Or sorry, Ichthyostega, I think, preceded Acanthostega. Anyway, um, and we should be able to find a fossil that has characteristics intermediate between both of those. Mm -hmm. And so what they did was they went to that place, which is which happened to be in uh, Arctic Canada, and they searched there for a couple of years, and eventually they found Tiktaalik which has the characters they expected uh, under evolutionary theory, given what they knew. So that's a prediction about an incomplete fossil record. Clearly, we don't have every fossil, but we have enough fossils to predict that if we go to a certain area on the planet and search, we might be able to find fossils with characteristics intermediate between the start and end points. Yeah. And that's exactly what they did. And so, the, and so the, the, the problem here is the, the usage of the word assumption. If you have mm -hmm. those two fossils and you make the assumption that there should be an intermediate fossil, that is right. an informed guess. It is a yes. guess based on the evidence that you have. So yes, you can make assumptions based on the evidence that you have, which is what you do, because that mm -hmm. is you're then going to investigate whether or not your assumption is correct. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, exactly. It's not that people are just assuming and, and just making stuff up out of thin air and coming up with assumptions. Well, well, obviously then that, no, it's based on what we see. It's an informed guess and the informed guess is going to be investigated. And if it's mm -hmm. if it turns out not to be true, then it's going to be discarded. It's another part they leave out. Yes, because yeah, that has right. happened as well. Yes, yeah. When um, when hypotheses or when you have a set of data, and it indicates, okay, well, maybe this <clears> is the conclusion, and so you do your testing and you find out, no, that's not the the conclusion. But exactly. we got more data, and now we see that the data points in this direction instead. Then you test that, and then mm -hmm. maybe that's the conclusion, or maybe not. But you have now more data where you can go in the next direction. Yeah. And another thing yeah. that I, I wanted there... to point out is is the word faith. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. The word faith has has two different meanings. There's a there's a really good reason that I never use the word faith. I am uh, like Arn Ra. I'm an epistemist. I reject faith for for it being the most dishonest position you can take on any given point. Mm -hmm. If you want to use the words, then use trust. And right. the the it's interchangeable with with creationists. They will use the word. Faith, as it, it's described in the Bible, based right. with uh, having faith without evidence and even against all evidence, as opposed to mm -hmm. being uh, the definition of faith with, with uh, which also exists, which is um, having trust in something. You have mm -hmm. faith in right. your husband. You have faith in your wife. No, that is trust. And that trust is also right. based on evidence. That is based on what you see in your relationship on a day-to-day -day basis. So yes, you have trust based on evidence. Yeah. I I don't even know if this, if it's even trying to use it in that um, that sense. It may be. Um, I, I've never heard of this part. I've never heard of any of these guys. Um, I don't know a lot of creationists from the 60s, I'm afraid. 
So well, given clearly, that, clearly that this given that most of the points in that book are still being hashed out today by by the creationists, <laughs> I, the the faith thing is is a recurring thing. And yes, sure, uh, you right. can you can You're definitely right. say that um, evolutionists had faith in their theory, mm -hmm. meaning trust based on evidence. I have not religious. I have faith, faith that when I sit in this chair, it's not going to fall right out from under Ooh, me. Oh, don't remind you know, me. It's going to hold me up. Don't remind me. I <laughs> did. I did. I I I I went on a Christian channel on a Christian radio show once, and I debated mm -hmm. the host for two hours on why an atheist can sit on a couch and not, not... <laughs> why an atheist can sit on a couch yes because we have faith and i told him it's not faith so he he then threw at me so every single time you want to sit down on a couch you have to test whether or not it holds your weight and then you can sit down no that's not well how that works it, it took me two hours on a Christian radio show. I'm not even kidding. This was before That's this amazing. was before I started my channel, by the way. That is amazing. But I mean, like when you when you're sitting in the chair, right? Well, I mean, you know, you're using trust in the sense like, okay, this chair looks sturdy, just giving it sort of a once over. It looks sturdy enough to hold me. But then when I sit in it, I'm actually testing that it that it can hold me up. Yes. And so next time I come to the chair, I will remember, probably, that this chair held me up in the past. Therefore, it is likely to hold me up again. Mm -hmm. And then I sit in it and it still does. So I'm basing. Uh, so you can say, oh, well, you're assuming it's going to hold you up. Well, yeah, but it's an assumption based on previous testing. So I also I also just, make yeah. my own furniture. So I know how it is made. I know how factories make chairs and couches and things that is how i learned right. to make my own furniture i've done the research in all of that so it was a stupid argument to come up with with me because this is something that i actually looked at how can i make a chair and can make it as sturdy and and still have it in different shapes where it looks like it might not even be holding you up that's also right. a possibility um right yeah, no, you, that's, it's, that is the worst person to pick that fight with because <laughs> they can be like, okay, look at the, the geometry of the legs and look at how thick the legs are, mm -hmm. you know, and how far apart they are and everything. And you can argue mathematically that this chair will hold up somebody of, you know, so many pounds, mm -hmm. that, you know, and do it well. And so, yeah, that's the worst argument because <laughs> they know in advance that this chair works even before they sit in it. Yes. <laughs> Oh man, oh. that's great! I love that. Um, I don't know who either Doctor Tamizian is or Doctor Klotz or Klotz, however you pronounce it. I don't know who these people are. <laughs> um, Tamizian is clearly a creationist because he says people who teach evolution as a fact are con men. And then I, it just says Klotz is the head of a of a college science department. That could be that could uh, be chemistry or physics. Yeah. That could be anything. So I, I don't, I don't know who that is. Um, he could, he but could, it's, be, it's, he could be in the college department of comparative religion and making and making well, statements it, about. This is a college science department, but science. Or, or computer science. Yeah, it could be computer science. Um, so yeah, I, I have no idea who that is. This is what this is doing is it's trying to use an argument from authority. It's just trying to say, look. This person's smart. They say evolution is dumb. Therefore, evolution is dumb. Well, mm, sorry, not how that works. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's evolution's not true because Charles Darwin said evolution is true. Evolution is true because Charles Darwin marshaled a great deal of evidence uh, demonstrating that evolution is true and that natural selection is you know, one of the primary <laughs> mechanisms. And then over the next century and a half, uh, re researchers have repeatedly tested and con and you know verified the the major important conclusions of it, and we found out way way more in the years hence. Yeah. And so it's it's just a bad little um, <clears throat> it's just a bad little 
uh, argument for authority. So at this point, we have been subject to a variety of quote mines, <laughs> uh, equivocation. We've seen a little bit of goalpost shifting. Oh, variation is not evolution. That's just variation. That's just microevolution. Yeah. Um, and we never so, get and we never get the definition of variation and how it happens. Funny enough. Nope. No, we didn't. No, because, we didn't. Because if they come up with um, how it happens, we might get to an evolutionary principle. Uh oh. And then and that. then we need something that stops it after it happens. <laughs> which is another thing we never find. And another thing that creationists right. never can come up with. Yes, you can have slight variations, but it will stop. Okay, why? What's what's making it stop? What's in the mm -hmm. genetics that make sure that after uh, a, a set amount of of uh, 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 variations or or mutations, what makes it stop? Right. If if that would work, yeah. we might be able to cure some diseases. If if that works, if we can stop mutations, yeah, if we can, as as you pointed out in the uh, in the experiment that that they did with the bacteria becoming resistant to, uh, um, uh, and now I lost the word. It's late. The antibiotics. The antibiotics. Yes. If we can stop them from evolving, hey, that would be good. Because then we will have st we still have working antibiotics and not bacteria that are are becoming resistant to it. Or maybe we mutate them so much that they like reach the edge of their their you know what's possible, and so they can't evolve anymore. Yes. They can't get any further. You know something. Well, but no, nope, nope, that doesn't that doesn't happen. It that doesn't... literally never happens. No. <laughs> Um, you're right, because they put themselves in this bind. It's like the same thing that we discussed earlier with macroevolution. They made, they dug their own hole, the creationists. They didn't have to argue this stuff. They just chose to, and now they have to hold it at all costs because they've already said, this is the line in the sand we're drawing. We're not going to cross it. Yeah. Like, why? Why there? Why did you pick the worst place to defend Yes. So. And and at any rate, one one uh, of the things one of the things that I still find it's blatantly dishonest, and that is the statement of faith. If you have evidence right. that goes against our book, it will be dismissed. So why? Right. Because you can't challenge the book. Because. Yeah. It's. <laughs> It is. It because is. It course. is just the equivalent of sticking your fingers in your ears and and start yelling la 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 la. I don't want to hear it. That's it. Yeah. It is. Yeah, you're right. Um, because at the core of all creationism, and this includes the Discovery Institute, there's just that theological imperative. There's always at the core defend god defend the bible even if they pretend no 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 we're science we have nothing to do with all that religion stuff we're we're just the science group over here nope mm -hmm. it's not it never is there's always always 100 percent of the time the bible at the center of that yeah um the discovery institute for instance uh if maybe you've heard of it it's called the, there's this thing called the wedge document where they laid out their plans for overthrowing science, basically, mm -hmm. and replacing the secular government with a theocracy. <clears throat> That's their goal, folks. That's what they want to do at the end of the day. That's why they're here. Um, and, and the same is true. And of, it's, of it's highly a funded. AIG if I'm, and all the others. Highly funded, if I'm not correct. Uh, the, the yes, every... it is. They're all very well funded, yeah. Yeah, there's, 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 um, I think their, their name is the Koch brothers who funded a yes, lot of the things yeah. going into the, uh, the, the wedge thing because they thought that that might mm. be a great idea. Yes. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. They're conservatives and they fund a lot of big, um, 
um, anti-science projects and things like that. So fun, fun. We got that going for us. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yay, America. Um, yeah. So, um, so first chapter, not, uh, not great. No <laughs> evidence has really been presented yet. Um, so maybe in the next chapter we'll get to see the, the evidence that, you know, just utterly refutes evolution. Um, and this will happen and then evolution will be thrown out in both the in both the non-communist and communist countries. Yes. <laughs> Which is important. Because yeah, that, I love that. Good lord. I, I that's just love basically that so every country on the planet, the communist and the non-communist <laughs> countries. God, I love that so much. <laughs> um, so yeah, the next the chapter next time is development of evolutionary theory. And I've written for my for my channel quite a bit about the development of evolutionary theory. And somehow, somehow, I get the feeling their history version is going to be a little bit different. <laughs> Very likely. I, I get the feeling there may be some slight discrepancies between our accounts of how evolution developed as a theory. Mm -hmm. That's just me. That's a that's a prediction i'm making in advance remember that next time people mm -hmm. we're gonna find out if if that if that becomes a verified uh prediction a so verified see, assumption a verified <laughs> assumption yes um all right everything is okay i have to put this up um everything is either <laughs> potato or not a potato Take nope. that, Spinoza. Is it up? That's a that's a true Why dichotomy. It up? Yeah, it's up. There it is. Okay. Yeah, everything is either from Ernie Matthews. Everything is either a potato or not a potato. Take that, Spinoza. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. I love that. That's great. Um. Yes. If oh, you haven't Ritz, heard Owen about Ritz. the wedge, Owen Ritz had a had a good comment. Uh. I, let me let me pull that up. Uh, for more on the Which Wedge one? document, watch the PBS document on creation trial in uh, in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, there's also a book, The Devil in Dover, which I have not had the pleasure of reading yet, but it is uh, all about the, the Kitzmiller-Dover trial, which was where, if you're not familiar, the uh, intelligent design groupies made their their new and improved debut so michael behe william dembski all those guys um they were trying to push uh, intelligent design in the science classroom and, a, and a, a parent complained and they took it all the way to the supreme court and supreme court ruled that creationism is or sorry, intelligent design is religion like creationism it is not science can't be taught in science classroom we've actually had several more cases to that effect in my own state yay louisiana yay the south <laughs> um what is it called? Um, the I can't remember. Uh, Redneckistan down here, you know, whatever. Uh, they they've tried pushing similar similar things. Um, so yeah, read the Devil in Dover. Watch the the PBS um, documentary because, like I said, at the base of it, it's about pushing creationism. Yeah, no I've been uh, I've been crazy busy uh, lately, so I still have to set it up. I I already have the agreement that uh, Ken Miller uh, is is more than happy to come on on my channel. What I wanted to do mm -hmm. is um, go over the Kit Miller versus Dover case and where mm -hmm. we are now, because there there have been uh, a few videos from I think five six years ago where. Uh, they went over it. It not only Ken Miller and and um, now I forgot her name. Uh, Eugenie Scott did uh, a few talks yes. about it mm -hmm. as well. Um, I'd like I'd like to have another update on where we are right yeah. now and and if there are any threats like it uh, still happening across uh -oh. across the USA. So um, there are. Uh scary there's scary business right now i'm not going to um i'm not going to get this video demonetized but there's scary business regarding the supreme court 
in this country at the very moment. And so um, any cases which were previously decided by the Supreme Court um, could also come under fire. And uh, that's one of them. So mm. yikes, we live in scary times right now. Yes. Just throwing that out there. Um, here's hoping, you know, if if I were if I were a praying man, I'd pray <laughs> that that doesn't happen. But uh, but here we are. So here's hoping that that doesn't happen and that it's still shown or still described as the religion, which it is. It is just religion with an exceed. It, I don't even know if it's fair to say there's a veneer. Mm -hmm. It's just religion. That's all it is. It's just God did it. That's literally their explanation for it. Like, I I, I, recently, I don't know how you could possibly pretend that science. I recently saw something that I'm going to adopt, and I'm going to use that in, in, in a lot of things where, where I'm going to be present, and which was a, a statement, time zones are a strange thing. For instance, it is 4 a.m. now in the Netherlands. It is 12 p.m. in <laughs> Brisbane. Mm -hmm. In the United States, it's 1953. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I had to throw true. that in there. Like, I, yeah, no, that's, that's. Oh, dear. That's absolutely true. Oh, dear. Um, oh, dear. He's so our, our favorite. Our favorite guy is here. Uh -oh. we, we, we spoke about him a little before before we went. All right. Off. I'm just going to. Otangelo, oh, we don't I'm, I'm replace. Sorry. I saw that I was freezing. We don't, yeah, Otangelo, we don't replace things that don't exist with other things because there's no need to replace it. Does that answer your so, question? Um, so I think, I think uh, we're gonna cut it because uh, my internet's starting to go out on me again. So um, thank you, Peter, for hosting. Um, I enjoyed doing this. Look forward to doing it this again in the fun. future. I don't know if, which if we'll be doing this or the. Or the other show next week we'll find out when we get there so thank you for hosting thank you everybody in the audience for watching and uh everybody have a nice night bye everyone